Yes, it's Tales uh, from the Jails with John uh, G. Sutton. That's me, by the way. Yeah, thanks very much for watching the channel. And uh, as I said yesterday, we've got to 5,000 subscribers now, which is a, a bit of an achievement, I think. Anyway, uh, because we've got to 5,000, I'm going to do a Q&A, live Q&A here at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the 31st of January. So that's six days time and I will be here. You can ask me what questions you want. 7 p.m. at night till 8 p.m. Round about then anyway. We can always see how it goes, yeah? And for all those who have been thinking about buying my book, I put a link down here so you can link on that. It's in Kindle, it's on audio books and it's uh, on paperback, of course. Yeah, and... Ooh, I don't know that. Alexa, shut up. Well, you've got one of them. Occasionally interrupts. I don't know why. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Scottish prisons to a certain extent. Not that I've served in the Scottish prisons, but I know quite a bit about them. I've met John McVicker, who was a pretty infamous uh, inmate from Barlinny, the Bar L. Uh, and uh, I thought I'd talk a bit, a bit about him. He, he went on to be a recognised author, didn't he? But when I met him, he seemed to be exceedingly pleased with himself. Are you with me? In other words, I like me, who do you like? That was what John McVicker struck me as being. Mind you, he had a film made about him with Roger Daltrey playing uh, him in the lead, yeah? And he didn't have a great... Uh, opinion about prison officers didn't like them you see thought they were damn stupid well he was obviously a highly intelligent man that's why he went around razoring people and uh, breaking into places and doing all, all, all the rest that he did all the villainy because he was such an intellectual that's what intellectuals do yeah, it must be mustn't it because he went on to, uh, he won a number of uh, awards, what they call them, Kirstler Awards, which I highly believe is extremely good. If it takes people out of the criminal justice system and puts them back into society doing something positive, then that has to be a step in the right direction. One particularly big success of that system <coughs> was an ex-inmate called Mark Leach, who you may have heard of, <coughs> who wrote a book, or still writes the book, called The Prison's Handbook. And uh, Mark Leach got uh, a master's degree in law whilst he was in prison. I was studying law at the same time, and I was in prison too, as a jailer. Except I was working 60 hours a week, and I had no spare time to study, although I did go and attend and take the courses in the end. I hadn't got time to uh, to study. I had no time to study. And it was compulsory overtime at the time, but Mark Leach didn't have compulsory overtime. He didn't have to pay for his course. He had it, all the facilities he needed in prison. All the time he needed in prison. <coughs> Three meals a day in prison bed even had attendants we call them jailers of course but basically that's what it amounted to and good for Mark Leach he went on and passed all the exams but uh, it just seemed a little bit tilted they didn't assist me in uh, doing that I, I had to take it myself and uh, ultimately failed, but I'm, I passed numerous examinations anyway and got out of there in the end and uh, went on to to work as a teacher. Got to be better than being a jailer. But anyway, Scottish prisons, yeah. We're talking about Barlinny. The, the other one made a film about it. They actually make films about these people's lives, yeah. I saw one the other day about, uh, was it Frankie Fraser? About how he was ripping the teeth out of the victims and nailing, having them nailed down to the warehouse the wooden warehouse floors in London whilst he burnt them with a blowtorch and look for the Richardsons and what have you. Nice guy, eh? 
make a film about his life and he went on to be a tour guide yeah i wonder if he uh, paused by any of his old warehouses and said uh, right seeing as you're on the uh, the tour let's let's get to it who's a volunteer here give me the pliers he wouldn't do that would he Could you get impaired you see anyway he's long gone any he? horrible sniveling wretch of a man during World War Two, used to break into people's houses during the blackout in the Blitz. Rob, rob, the, rob all the poor women and children whilst whilst their husbands were away fighting World War Two. He refused to join the military. I think he was labelled insane, put into a institution for, for people who were mad, and uh, excused military service. When I met him at uh, Strange Ways, he was also excused at boots. He didn't wear boots, didn't wear shoes. Said he had fallen arches or something like that. So he used to walk around the landings in his slippers. He managed to uh, persuade the chief officer that he was his friend, you know. The chief officer was a really nice guy. Too good for that job, you know. Should have been a manager outside some big company you know and he used to bring him pork pies in frankie fraser said to me ah they don't have to be locked up the chief says i can be i give i don't have to be behind me door i said uh, he can say what he wants in the meantime get in your cell so i went to see the chief officer i said what's this about you saying frankie fraser can be unlocked Oh, well, he said to me, it's only Frankie. You know Frankie Fraser, it's only Frankie. I said, yeah, I know who Frankie Fraser is. I've seen his record. I'm the records officer, don't forget. I said, he's an extremely dangerous man. And when I'm on duty, he stays behind his door. No, no, I got all right, get out. That was it. So I got, I got the bums rushing out the chief's office. But hey, what are you going to do? Well, you can do your duty, which is what I did, or you can uh, suck all up to a creep like Frankie Fraser, which is what the chief was doing. Yeah, so he got the likes of Jimmy Boyle in the bar in Barlinny. If you've seen the film of Jimmy Boyle, yeah, it's called A Sense of Freedom. It's quite well done, really, but when you see it, you realise that Jimmy Boyle was quite a nasty piece of work. He was extorting money off the working class in Glasgow by running a loan shark agency charging them like lend them I don't know 10 shillings and get get a pound back that kind of thing you know generally bleeding the public dry and if they didn't pay him then he used to raise them I mean how brave is that and apparently in the, in, well, in the film, according to the film, you know, the jailers couldn't handle him, you know. Well, I worked at Strange Ways for quite a long time in the scrubs. And all the time I worked there, I never came across one inmate that couldn't be handled. I know a lot of them that said they, they were too tough for the scrubs and too tough for the, for Strange Ways. But when I saw them, they weren't. So one inmate uh, down the block at Strange Ways called George Wilkinson. Look him up. Do not believe me for one instance. Don't have to. Look it up. George Wilkinson. And you'll see when you Google George Wilkinson. George Wilkinson prisoner, yeah? Uh, when you look him up, you'll see that there's uh, questions in Parliament about him because he went on hunger strike at Strange Ways. Uh, because he didn't like the the conditions, and George Wilkinson was probably about six foot six, six foot seven. He was an extremely big man who had terrorised the village or the little town in Cumbria where he came from, terrorised them, and basically he tried it at the scrubs. Of course, when you when you come across the school bully, piggy. Chinese money box and all the rest of it and you get the staff the medical staff who got syringes 
with answers in them straight in the jacksy that's the uh, that's the argument over <laughs> anyway George Wilkinson couldn't take it he refused to eat said he wasn't going to eat until he got better treatment well, he didn't get better treatment how could he get better treatment he was trying to intimidate the staff he died in uh, Walton Jail I believe it was Walton Jail yeah the day after they transferred him from strange ways I was down the block when uh, this chief inspector from the police in Cumbria rang up and said uh, I want to speak to the officer in charge of the segregation unit well it was a senior officer on there he was just standing next to me when he took the call he said hey, that was uh, chief inspector such a body from the Cumbrian police saying well done lads got rid of that bastard they didn't kill him he killed himself you know but he killed himself because he couldn't bully the staff and that's what i mean you know see all these films you know frankie fraser can't handle him believe me he was about five foot two get in your cell he went and got in his cell not a problem yeah john mcvicker he escaped a couple of times ultimately he did some bird Jimmy Boyle, Razor Boy, he had to do some bird. The, the, the thing is, McVicker and uh, Jimmy Boyle, they got awards from Kirstler, and uh, Jimmy Boyle went on to be uh, a sculptor, and uh, John McVicker went on to be a journalist and a writer, which is good. I mean, he's doing something positive. I'll tell you, McVicker had this big opinion about how wonderful he was and how stupid everybody else was he's dead now anyway aren't you missing him i bet you are aren't you anyway do you know what it is today folks seeing as, seeing as we're talking about scotland i'm sure that many of you do it's burns night yeah so i'm going to recite recite i'm going to sing today i'm going to recite a poem by Robert Burns. I'm going to do my best to do it anyway if I can see it, yeah? Hmm. Yeah, are we ready? Yeah, a man's a man for all that. By Robert Burns. Is there for honesty poverty That hangs his head and all that? The coward slave we pass him by We dare be poor for all that. For all that. And all that, our toils obscure, and all that. The rank is but the guinea's stamp, the man's the god, for all that. What though on hamely fair we dine, we're hodden grey, and all that. Grey fools, their silks, and knaves, their wine. A man's a man for all that, for all that and all that. The tinsel snow and all that. The honest man, though o'er so poor, is king of men for all that. You see, yon Berkey cad, a lord, what struts and stares and all that. Though hundreds worship at his word, he's but a coof for all that. For all that. And all that. For ribbon star and all that. The man of independence mind, he looks and laughs at all that. A price can make a belted knight, a marquis, duke, and all that. But an honest man's a boon his might. Good faith, he's monarch for that, for all that, and all that. Their dignities, and all that. The path of sense and pride of worth are higher rank than all that. Then tell us, pray, that come if may, 
has come it will for all that. That sense and worth are all the earth shall bear the gree and all that for all that and all that that man to man the world o'er shall brothers be for all that there you go Robert Burns a man's a man for all that Sincerely hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to get my book. I've put a link to it down there. And on the 7th, at 7pm 7 on the 31st of January, we're doing a Q&A here. So please put that in your diary and do join us here. And if, if you like my comedy stuff, which sometimes I throw a bit of comedy in, have a look at my TikTok channel, yeah? The, the, the TikTok channel's there. You, you can look at that, yeah. Tales from the Jails. 